Now, you know our next guest, firstly, as the man who told you what games to buy as a top reviewer on GameSpot, then from his work on the amazing title Bastion. Today, Greg Kasavin from Supergiant Games joins us to talk about his next project. Thank you, Greg, for taking the time to chat. Yeah, sure thing. What is your next game all about? What's it called? And uh, what can we expect? Uh, well, uh, we have just recently revealed our, our second game. It's called Transistor. Uh, it is a science fiction themed action RPG. So we are uh, working in the same uh, genre, I suppose, as, as in Bastion, though a, a very different setting this time around. And, you know, after, after we finished work on, on Bastion, uh, that, that game in a lot of ways was kind of our exploration into the action RPG genre, and I think we uh, managed to surprise a lot of people with it, and we felt uh, there there was uh, kind of plenty of more room for exploration and surprise there, uh, so we, we decided to keep going. Uh, and, you know, th- this time around, I think uh, people who've had a chance to play the game at, at PAX East in Boston, they notice that uh, we have a, a kind of this emphasis on a more strategic uh, mode of play from moment to moment, so it's it's got... Uh, it, it, like within the action RPG context, you're able to kind of stop and plan your actions and have a more sort of a deliberately paced combat system that we wanted to make feel uh, very deep and open-ended. What can you tell us as the focus of the narrative in uh, the game Transistor? Because I know Bastion expressed that in a really unique and uh, very effective way. What can we expect for Transistor in terms of narrative? Yeah, so that's, um, you know, once again, that that is a... a big uh, point of focus for for us on the on the development team you know we'd like for people to go in uh cold into our games not knowing quite what to expect and unraveling the mysteries but this time around you uh the the protagonist is this woman called red who i i like to say she's having a very bad evening at the start of this game Mm -hmm. uh where she has uh sort of escaped a a murder attempt and and kind of the only good news is that She's discovered this uh, very unusual weapon, uh, and uh, it, and from this weapon uh, comes comes a voice. Uh, it's it's someone the voice of someone that she's uh, familiar with, in fact. And uh, so together they have to journey through uh, this city and try to kind of find the answers as to why she was targeted and what what is this strange phenomenon that's beginning to uh, kind of follow her wherever she goes and desperately trying to retrieve this weapon. So that's. Um, that's kind of the the basic setup and we hope you know it'll it'll create a lot of uh, interesting surprises and situations for players as they go through and figure out what's really going on you touched on it a bit there um what elements developed in bastion that you guys worked so hard to make sure that they worked will the team be bringing to this project so you talked about um the gameplay is going to be a little more strategic we have similar sort of narrative are there any more instances of uh, the work you did on bastion that allowed you like you said it was more of an exploration into the series allow you to refine it for uh the game this time around yeah you know i think like we um the most important thing to us is is for this new game to have its own distinct identity um so we you know we're certainly in some respect we're building off of what we learned and what we were able to do with bastion um, the, the game is still, you know, played from an isometric point of view, and, and the, the, all seven of the people who worked on Bastion are working on this game. So I think, like our, our sort of uh, our signature, as such as it is, uh, will, will be noticeable there. You know, even though all the characters and the setting and the style of play are all quite different. Um, but yeah, for, from our point of view, we kind of we take nothing for granted, and we wanted to build a whole new world for this game and take the gameplay in a pretty different direction um so we we don't uh, like we we don't really carry over anything uh just because it works we even when we come back around to making similar decisions as we did on bastion it's, it's never sort of done out of hand it's always because we we decide it feels right for this uh, this particular game if that makes sense yeah, yeah, I think so. That it's not just the fact that it worked; it needs to work for this particular game that yeah, you're working that's on right. now. Yeah. Well, in terms of the, like, uh, sorry, continue. Oh yeah, I was just going to say, I, I think like sort of the the values of the people on this team are still like, uh, we we're very happy with with the response to Bastion, and that game really reflected, you know, the the types of people we are as game developers, and like, so you know, with regard to everything from the importance of the audio and the music to to the 
the significance of the, the narrative and kind of the immediacy of the gameplay. Those are all things we really care about and uh, people who enjoyed those aspects of Bastion I think will find that uh, Transistor you know, has similar values behind it. Um, it but yeah, with, with a lot of the, the, but that's kind of on a, on a high level, you know, so hopefully mm-hmm. the experience itself will, will feel uh, very, very uh, distinct in its own right. In terms of the gameplay, it, just, it looks absolutely fantastic and interesting and a new sort of way to uh, play these action RPGs. How would you describe it for someone who hasn't played, who perhaps hasn't even seen it before, and uh, to give them kind of an, an understanding of what they can expect when they do eventually play Transistor? Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, when, you, when you first pick it up and start playing, it, it plays like an action RPG, so you have direct control over a character, and uh, you can you can navigate uh, through this this kind of city environment that we've created very easily. It's meant to be very easy to pick up and start playing. You know, you get into some dangerous situations pretty early on, and your kind of basic methods of attack uh, are, are actually pretty straightforward, um, and similar to, you know, any number of mm-hmm. other games, I suppose, from, like, from something like Bastion to Diablo or Zelda or whatever games that Bastion got compared to. Um, but things get uh, pretty different early on when you when you discover this ability where you can essentially stop everything around you besides yourself. And then you can take uh, however much time you need to sequence your next set of actions. You can like undo your actions and so on and sort of develop a perfect plan. And then finally you pull the trigger on it and see what happens. Then you execute the moves that you planned uh, in sort of a supercharged fashion. So it's, it's, it's a very powerful ability uh, that you get, and it allows you to, uh, you, you know, you can use it both offensively and defensively to get out of dangerous situations or to kind of overpower uh, certain opponents and so forth. Uh, we wanted it to be very open-ended like that and, and to, make, uh, to make it so that you're kind of compelled to use it in a way that suits you rather than to sort of force it upon the player. Um, so you can be very effective in this game just playing in real time uh, as, as you could in a game like Bastion. Uh, but then, uh, you know, this added this is strategic planning mode, though, is, is really what uh, uh, has been like the focus of our uh, prototyping and, and design efforts, um, just ma- balancing the, all the encounters around uh, this powerful ability that you have. It means that we can like make a lot of the foes that you're facing uh, very uh, powerful indeed because you could always turn the tables on them uh, using this ability. How have um, some players who had the chance to play at Apex, how have they used this innovative new ability and um, where did you really come with this development um, mechanic? Where did did this come from? Because seeing it being played seems absolutely, it's amazing to see you can be that strategic if you want to. And we've seen videos where people don't necessarily do that at all. They do take a much more defensive route. How have they been playing? And uh, I guess, yeah, where did the real origin of this uh, mechanic come from? Yeah, I'll start with that part, which is that, you know, where we wanted to go with it, um, I I alluded to this before, but we wanted to make like kind of a very deep feeling system where um, the the combat sort of had more inherent drama to it, more of like an ebb and flow uh, to the encounter. Um, Not necessarily in direct response to anything in Bastion, it really was a change of direction for us where like we we have a lot of love for classic uh, turn-based strategy games and tactical RPGs. Um, from you know from the 90s and stuff like that and uh, while we didn't want to go straight ahead into like a turn-based style of play we were interested to see if we could like capture the feeling of that style of play in a more sort of immediate and like action-oriented action RPG context Um, and we found you you know we spent a while prototyping that and getting it to where it is uh, right now Um, and when we when we let people play it for the first time at PAX uh, we were really, really happy with with the response because, yeah, people were just you know you, people were able to pick it up immediately because uh, they first learn you know they, they they kind of have an immediate grasp of of the action RPG style of play because that's just very simple. Um, but you use those same exact mechanics to do your planning, uh, and and uh, so yeah, it was great to see people pick up on that and and um, you know some would use the system in kind of a very brute force way of like oh I could just completely overpower these one or two opponents or something like that. But then, you know, as the encounters get more challenging, people very naturally engage in a more, like, strategic mode of play, and they start using cover. Uh, they start, uh, you know, spending a little more time planning their, their planning their actions a little more deliberately and stuff like that, and 
kind of the more you invest in your plan, kind of the more excited you may be to see the outcome. And uh, people just seem to have a good time with it. And we saw them do all sorts of different things, you know, some of which we had never tried on, on team and stuff like that. And that's, that's all very exciting for us because, yeah, we want it to be open-ended like that. People trying to break the system at PAX, and so far there wasn't an issue with that. <laughs> no, yeah, it yeah. Actually, yeah, that was another pleasant surprise. Actually. <laughs> we, we go into those things uh, expecting, uh, expecting some amount of disaster, and thankfully it, it uh, you know, the game didn't crash. It, like, held up, because it's still early in development for us. Uh, we're, we're still pre-alpha, so this was just a first look, and we um, knew, yeah, we, we had uh, never had that many people uh, play it back to back, so we certainly didn't know exactly uh, what we were getting ourselves into with with a show like that. Absolutely. Now, in terms of the design options, this now gives you that you have this really powerful mechanic that gives you a more um, strategic mode of gameplay. What does that allow you to do in terms of making the enemies that we will be facing? Does it allow you to make them, you touched on a bit there, more multifaceted? And what are some examples of that? Yeah, so that that's um, above all. Yeah, we can make them. We can make them just sort of much tougher than they would be if if you didn't have this ability. Like uh, one of the ways I like to talk about it is, um, it, it's almost it's almost as though you know, what if there were a game where uh, you get the ultimate weapon in the game, not before the very last boss fight or something like that, but at the very start. Like, how would you proceed to make uh, the gameplay interesting? Uh, when when you have like the end game weapon immediately, and that's that's uh, almost uh, some of the mindset where um, the the foes you're up against it's this kind of mysterious faction called the process. You don't really know what these things are, what they what they want, other than they really want this weapon, the transistor, back, uh, and uh, and they are capable of some surprising things. Like uh, one of the you know one of the foes you fight very early on. Every time you hit her, she kind of produces a copy of herself to multiply her her firepower. So that she's an example of an enemy that actually is able to subvert uh, some of your planning ability because some you know the first guys you fight, you may just want to go to town on them, uh, just hit mm-hmm. them repeatedly one after another. But she is able to sort of counteract that particular tactic, um, and the the we. Well, I don't want to say too much more about them, but basically, it's like a, it's a faction that, uh, you know, is is familiar with the capabilities of the weapon that you have. <laughs> so Ooh, I like I like that gonna, wording to describe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're they're gonna like they're gonna try very hard to to try to you know try to wrestle this mm-hmm. thing back from you and kind of counter your very powerful maneuvers with with tricks of their own. So, I mean, from our point of view, hopefully it just means we can keep the enemies very tricky and doing, like, devious and surprising things that force you to um, really think about your, your position and uh, kind of really think about your tactics um, and uh, and plan your moves carefully and kind of have a lot of uh, surprising moments when, when you fight against them. Uh, we just want them to be uh, it just that right balance of predictable and yet unpredictable because they have to be predict- predictable a little bit in order for any strategy to, to make sense. You need to be able to learn what they're capable of. But I think they're going to be, you know, in comparison to something like Bastion, they're, they're going to have uh, much more, they're going to be a much more versatile type of force than the fairly uh, kind of straightforward uh, types of foes that you ran into in Bastion. I can't wait for it. In terms of RPG elements, will it be um, more of the staples of levels or collectibles or what are you adding to make it more of that sort of RPG story? Yeah, we we haven't shown too much of what we're doing there yet. Uh, but the thing we we're very interested in is is like your your discovery around the the capabilities of this weapon that you've found and and unlocking its secrets as you go. Um, it just in what we've shown at PAX so far, you gain access to uh, several new abilities just in just in that relatively short portion of the game. And what we're what we're getting at there is that you're going to have a wide variety of these different functions to choose from where, you know, this weapon can be, uh, can be reconfigured um, in, in some surprising ways and can unlock some surprising powers and stuff like that. Um, so that's, that's kind of where a lot of our interests and, and focus lies. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we haven't, we haven't gone into 
Can't talk about it yet, but it is there. Can't talk about it yeah, yet, yeah, but it yeah. will it will affect the uh, the gameplay in interesting and strategic ways. Is basically what we're going with here. Yeah, so yeah. that's certainly our we we wanting to make uh, interesting choices around the thing for sure. Oh, well, visually, from what we've seen, it it looks incredibly stunning. I know anytime you put a big sword in a video game, everyone thinks Final Fantasy, <laughs> but uh, it does kind of it has a visual style that is reminiscent to me of uh, early Final Fantasy games, and oddly. A mix of the Afro Samurai series that could be reaching a bit on my part, but who is responsible for these really high fidelity visuals, and why did you go with um, this sort of style that, like you said before, is kind of similar in Bastion a little bit? There's some kind of a hewn that kind of looks similar, but it does have a very uh, distinctively different look this uh, time around. Yeah, so we owe the the game's visual style to uh, to Gen Z, our art director, who is the same uh, artist who worked on Bastion. Um, so yeah, I mean, any, uh, any similarity there is going to be somewhat natural and that it's the work of the same person. Um, though, uh, though, yeah, I think, uh, Transistor has its own distinct uh, style. It's, it's, it's a less sort of, um, it's a more modern looking world. So it's a less cartoon like world, whereas Bastion had almost like this sort of old fashioned, uh, fairy tale kind of aesthetic and was, was somewhat cartoon like. Uh, um, the transistor is less so and has a more, you know, the, the setting appears more modern. Um, and we made some stylistic choices to go along with that. Uh, you know, in, in terms of how we develop the looks of our stuff, it, it just mostly just takes us a long time. We take a very much kind of a melting pot approach of lots and lots of different influences from different media um, with, with the goal being like, like I, like I said to the, come up with something that has a distinct identity that, that doesn't really remind us uh, specifically of any thing that we've seen before. Uh, not because we don't, uh, not because we don't like uh, other stuff. For, for example, some people like compare the games look to like cyberpunk fiction or something like mm-hmm. that. Uh, you, you know, I love games like a uh, Deus Ex human revolution or like mass effect or, or, or what have you. And we don't, we don't want to go for a look and feel like that in, in part because it's just been done so well by games like that already. So we wanted a, a setting that, that felt sort of uh, had like an anachronistic feel. Um, and we wanted a combination of like a futuristic as well as like a vintage quality to the setting um, so that you're not quite sure where it is or what time period it, it is. And just to, for it to have like a lot of mystery to it that you want to get to the bottom of. It seems um, like And yeah, there's, yeah. Oh, no, keep going. Sorry. Oh, no, that's, I could go off about it forever. <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, we, we like, you know, this, this is what we've got so far, and we hope uh, it uh, raises some interesting questions and so forth. It is a really innovative idea for a game like what you guys did with Bastion. I always wonder for these sort of products, where did the motivation come from for this um, iteration now when we're playing Transistor? Where Where is this uh, being thought of? Is it a spark of lightning or, like you said, more of just a melting pot of little things coming together, eventually realizing uh, the vision of what we see today? Yeah, it's more it's more the latter. I mean, it takes us, like, even, even Bastion, it was never... Uh, the, the the design of that game, the the aspects that make that make it special, they they came about in a pretty gradual way over the course of the game's development. Uh, what what we often um, say is that you, you know the chemistry of the people we have on the team here at Supergiant is really the most important thing that we've got going for us, and we we uh, just often come up with ideas and try them and, and very few of them work really. <laughs> we just get constantly throw out the stuff that doesn't work and, uh, but certain things stick and over a period of time it, it starts to take shape and turn into something. Um, and it worked out that way on Bastion, you know, where, where very important qualities of that game, like the use of the narration, they, they were, they were neither there nor even like contemplated when development on that game started. Um, so, you know, likewise with this game, uh, aspects of the presentation and the gameplay, they, they just kind of evolved over a number of months. Um, and, and like I said, even, even with what we've shown, it's still, it's still pretty early um, in development, so we have a ways to go. But we felt it was enough uh, to show, you know, to give an impression of what kind of the general feel of what we're going for and wanted to see what people thought. Well, cannot wait for it. Uh, thank you again for joining the show. I know previously you've spoken at length about the role of uh, indie games that do two or three things really, really well. Yeah. 
as you develop another title um, in this sort of genre, have things changed since the development of Bastion that are affecting your design choices? And is the indie genre um, growing, continuing to grow? Where, where do you see it? Yeah, th- that's a great question. I mean, I think things, I think things have changed a lot in some ways, uh, and they're continuing to, you know, they're continuing to evolve. Uh, particularly, what's what's really interesting right now is just you know, how we stand on the cusp of, like, a generational change with video game consoles, uh, expecting, you know, some new consoles to be out before the end of this year and stuff like that. Or the PlayStation 4 has already been announced, and it seems like Microsoft has something up their sleeve, too. Um, and that's just going to... I think those things are... It's going to be super interesting to see how it how it pans out. Um, and, you know, basically, I think where where people spend most of their time playing games... A lot of that has has changed a lot over the last few years, um, and and will probably continue to change. So, from our point of view as a small studio, we just want to be wherever uh, people are are playing games, and you know, and uh, our our story with Bastion was that we brought the game to a number of different platforms, um, and we learned a lot at each step. And yeah, we just want to stay very uh, maneuverable that way, because uh, who knows you know, what people are going to be playing games on in another five years or, or what um, what controls they're going to be using and so forth. You know, these days everyone's use, using uh, touch devices and so forth. Mm-hmm. In a few years, you know, maybe virtual reality is, is going to come back or people will be playing games with their brains. For all I know, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that's, that's, a, that's a good way to end it, playing games with your brains. Uh, thanks again, uh, Greg Kazab and Supergiant Games talking about their next product, Transistor. Cannot wait for it. Uh, when can we expect I know you said it's early in development, and I guess, yeah, what systems at this point? Or is that still uh, both kind of open-ended? Yeah, we um, we don't know we don't yet know which platform or platforms it's going to be on when, when it comes out, but we expect it to be done sometime early next year. Excellent. Cannot wait for it. Thanks again, Andy Burkowski, VGS. I dig my hole, you build a wall.